we have with us uh, Colonel Gaurav Dimri, sir is an ex NDA, and then he served with the armored regiment. He commanded his uh, regiment, which is the 43 armor. And after finishing his command, sir chose to seek a voluntary uh, retirement and then did an MBA in human resources from the prestigious uh, Management Development Institute, Gurgaon. After that, sir has been an HR leader, having worked initially with the Trident group of companies and now has head HR for Sada group of companies. We had uh, uh, had a conversation with him in the part one of understanding the functional role of corporate HR, wherein we broadly touched upon the aspects of corporate HR. And now we have again requested sir to come in, uh, kind of help us understand take a deeper dive into the HR function and, and uh, how professionals who are looking to be or, or you know people who are wanting to be HR professionals, how they can uh, kind of approach it and, and what are the internal workings of uh, a typical HR department. So welcome again, uh, Gaurav sir. Thanks for uh, sparing your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, sir, I to be part of your... Uh, पिछले वाले थ्रेड को ही थोड़ा आगे बढ़ाते हैं आपने पिछली बार बताया कि एचआर फंक्शन एक एक बड़ा कॉम्पोजिट सा फंक्शन है वी आल्सो टच्ड अपॉन सर्टेन इनिशिएटिव्स व्हिच यू डिड व्हेन यू आर हेडिंग अ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेटअप वेयर इन यू प्रोब्ड इन द द वुमेन फोक फ्रॉम द नेबरिंग कम्युनिटीज टू क्रिएट अ टू साइडेड सस्टेनेबल मॉडल फॉर देम एज़ वेल एज़ फॉर योर वर्कफोर्स नीड्स एंड ऑल अब मैं थोड़ा सा और डीप डाइव इंटरनल फंक्शनिंग्स में जाना चाहता हूँ तो माय क्वेश्चन वुड बी कैन यू इलेबोरेट ऑन द लीडरशिप स्ट्रक्चर विद इन दी एच आर डिपार्टमेंट हाउ इज इट प्लेस्ड हर आर की क्ली वॉट इज दैडर काइंड वेरी वेरी रेलिवेंट क्वेश्चन बट बिफोर आई आंसर दैट द रेजिमेंट इज फोर्टी एट फोर्टी थ्री वॉज अस्टर रेजिमेंट so coming on to the question uh, on the the structure of hr uh, depending on the you know the the nature of the organization as you as we talked last time the manufacturing setup or the services uh, sector uh, and the size of the organization the numbers uh, of the hr team may vary maybe uh, uh, verticals sub verticals may get merged but largely uh, the structure uh, more or less is, is headed by if it's a multi location multi uh, diversified uh, multi location uh, setup it will have a, a group level uh, functionary who will be heading the group hr and you have various business entities at same location in same product or different locations and diverse products so each of these businesses then will have their respective uh, hr teams uh, which are uh, led by uh, people who generally we designate them as hrbps or hr business partners they can be location hr heads also if if three or four businesses are located at a particular location then each business is headed by an hrbp reporting into a location hr head and who then reports various location hr heads reporting into the group hr head and under the hrbps or business hr heads or entity hr leads uh, we will have, uh, depending on the nature of requirement, talent acquisition team or the, uh, the recruitment team. We'll have the PMS team, the compensation and benefit setup, which may be central instead of the prospective business wise. The PMS also may be a centralized function instead of uh, business wise. We'll have the the IR and the employee relations team, the industrial relations and the employee, uh, depending if it's a manufacturing setup with the diverse workforce. And uh, then they will have the exit box, the, the exit team, which uh, processes the, the exit of the employees, uh, the LND teams, which primarily look into the, the skill gaps, the requirement of training and upskilling of employees. So these are the, uh, the vertical, as I said in my previous talk, the womb to tomb, the, all the functions from entry to exit, from recruitment, onboarding, ta talent management. Uh, learning and development, training and assessment, PMS. Then you have uh, compensation and benefits. You know, th th these are the teams. And at, at central level, with at the group level, you may have teams uh, such as uh, HR initiatives, which plan 
and undertake and implement certain uh, group level initiatives. Uh, you know, uh, as I as I said in last time, we had that program of of recruitment. Then you will have certain engagement activities, rewards and benefits activities which may be planned at group level. Say campus hiring is is to happen. That may happen at group level with the HR initiatives. Right? You may also have a sub vertical. You know, in organizations which we now we may term as HR transformation, uh, which will look into the 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 incorporation of latest. Uh, technology into HR processes. We may have or we may designate it as an HR IT sub vertical. So these may be at the group level. So that way the sub verticals or functions are organized and uh, reportings at times could be direct or dotted at places into the business heads to align the, the HR functioning with the businesses also. But the overall uh, functioning remains with the, if it's a large group, with the group uh, CHRO or with the uh, the, the the HR head of the organization. So that way we brought the function. Okay, so so it's it's both hierarchical as well as uh, lateral, wherein you have a lot of uh, sub functions, and then you have the normal managerial and uh, senior managerial, Absolutely. regional. Absolutely. Absolutely. No? In your uh, the last talk as well as this one, you said you know the womb to tomb and. Uh, it's got a lot to do with with the people or, or the human resource, uh, the organization. Whenever I speak to the HR or whatever my little understanding and research says that, uh, and I am a finance person, so I come from from that understanding and that learning. So a, a lot of constraint with with the business is that they ask the HR to uh, provide a certain kind of a manpower. Uh, a certain kind of a resource, a certain kind of a skill, and and they want the best because they have a certain role to perform. And then suddenly people like us who come in and say that you know this is the maximum we can spend for because that's what my pocket allows. So how do you then solve this particular uh, problem wherein you know uh, you ensure that your compensation structure is attractive yet competitive and you're able to get the right kind of talent for uh, the business? Again, that's that's a very, very relevant question because there is always a conflict in an organization to attract and get the best talent and align it with the uh, the cost of the employee. You know, the function of uh, overall profitability of the organization may not be a direct HR function, but the cost of manpower has a huge bearing on the overall profitability and uh, achievement of business objectives so when we talk of manpower cost the uh, there is always a, this this uh, you know a, a continuous conflict that we want the best and what are we willing to in terms of cost we are willing to provide for it so and here the the, the hr yes you are right the hr needs to strike a balance so while uh, the the hr would understand the nature of the job and what capabilities are required it has to match with the intent of the organization where the cost also plays a role that's very right so how we do that how we match that is we would tend to broaden the, the job description we may try to add certain competencies which can add to the profile you know we create a talent pool within the organization or uh, past employees or references people who are willing to relocate would may want to you know join the organization and carry that requisite skill. Uh, we may even uh, uh, have a, a, a better comp and benefit structure in terms of offering them variables, offering various perks, benefits, a uh, kind of an assured promotion policy, a kind of uh, internal growth, maybe offering them uh, a certain uh, contribution in terms of making them acquire certain educational qualifications at the cost of the organization provided it serve for a certain number of years so when that happens in terms of benefits uh, variables perks certain growth prospects in terms of assured manner one is able to then try to strike a balance between the uh, hiring and uh, the manpower cost and the and the talent available mm -hmm. but that's a very very uh, continuous process that way Okay. Now, sir, once you hire people and you have an organization to run and all, to say, Hindi mein kehte hai, char hoonge, to and 
besides that i'm sure there are all kind of people who come into an organization so how do you manage the internal conflicts and and uh, at times violations i mean what kind of an approach is it always a stick approach is it a carrot and stick or i mean uh, what are the conflict resolution processes which typically good hr uh, practitioners employ in the corporate or you ought to say should employ as a recommendation so again a uh, very very relevant uh, question especially for people who want to get into hr because uh, irrespective of the nature of the business the size of the business the nature of the product the heart of the business is the hr while the strategy may be the brains and the and the accelerator may be the marketing and the sales the heart of the business is hr and like uh, the the most critical part of human body you know which accepts or which is able to give a feedback to the brain you know people say i either think for my brain or for my heart so what the heart tells you the brain also tries to interpret that so from that point of view in any organization internal conflicts are bound to happen it may be and i guess you're right so at times there may be disciplinary cases also there may be certain violations also so uh, as a as a good hr professional you are trained to install those mechanisms which a have preventive measures b in case issues happen then there are accessible reporting measures and when incidents get reported there are measures to resolve that in within a given time so it is preventive uh, measures reporting measures and then you have the resolution measures preventive measures largely involve uh, you know implementation of strict policy guidelines and sops and ensuring their adherence through the hr and through the departments you have not only uh, online mechanisms to report uh, any grievance or any conflict if somebody is not able to personally come you have uh, uh, otherwise regular interactions meetings with the employees maybe in groups maybe one one on one you have the system uh, organization also have a system where tickets can be raised uh, with the help of a mobile if they don't have access to the system you even have uh, you know the uh, the means of uh, putting it a uh, right written complaint in the grievance box obviously the grievance box is so suitably placed that it is not under a cctv coverage so that it gives him confidence to the employee that even if he, he lodges a complaint and he has some fear he still has the confidence to lodge the complaint without being identified and that his complaint will be addressed so you have both manual means where employees can walk in they can raise it uh, uh, online through his mobile or through the system or through or through a pen and paper means and once that happens the system gets into play you have uh, the laid down procedures depending on the nature of uh, the complaint or a grievance you have uh, organization guidelines to investigate them uh, if in case the female members involved or there are guidelines statutory guidelines in terms of uh, sexual harassment complaints then you have the posh guidelines to follow they are all instituted you know a, a three member five member committee is installed female members are there employees are there then you have female uh, members in the investigative committee it's like the services where a court of inquiry is ordered here the investigative committee that committee has a time frame it undertakes the statements it uh, arrives at a conclusion recommends action and uh, everything works in a strict time frame and uh, these are all uh, a record of the same is maintained in case an employee is to be given a written warning the, the copy of the complaint uh, or the inquiry and as well as the action taken is maintained in his personal record which has a bearing on his future uh, employability as well as the promotion so these are measures to instill discipline if it requires exit of the employee that is also processed so uh, it all happens in a in a time frame in a very very impartial manner that the larger employees have that confidence that a they will be heard b they have the means to report their grievance and see that in case uh, the grievance is found to be tangible then the resolution will be in the fastest given time frame laid down time frame and impartial and for the and address their complaint and that way the confidence of the employee grows and it is respect i mean in private organization we've seen 
grievances against the highest authorities are also addressed in the same manner as it is to the lowest authorities. Mr. Thank you so much for having provided us this uh, guidance. I believe that uh, people who are looking to be HR professionals at any seniority or at any age, they should get some perspective and, and uh, they, they contribute to the workings of the corporate and, and contribute in nation building. I'm thankful for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.